on Tuesday, the 25th of September, and I'm calling the other people from the waiting room. Yeah, oh, there they are. I'll just wait until we're all here, and then I'll call. Yeah. All right. It is 6 p.m. on Tuesday, the 24th of September, and I'm calling the meeting of the Waitley Select Board to order. First item on the agenda is to review and vote to approve the meeting minutes from both September 10th and September 12th. Is there any discussion or questions? I have three nitpicks in the same paragraph on page two. Of which one? The of the 10th or the 12th. 10th. Okay. Um, in the paragraph P shared three model post agreements. In line two, there should be an apostrophe in Canvas Control Commission. Okay. Next line, council should be C O U N S E L, not C I L. Oh, All right. That's in there, counseling. And then two months after that, it says Cannibal Control Commissions, and it should be Cannibal. <laughs> Cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> That would really be a typo. Okay. It'd be really bad for one control for cannabis. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm cannabis sorry. control commissions should be this commission or ah okay. What do they say again? I'm sorry. But yeah, September 10th. September 10th. Right. Page, page two. Yeah. Okay. Very All right. Very important. There you for correcting. Yeah. Anybody else, Joyce? Any? You should do. You know, I can't, I can't top that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will entertain a motion then. I would uh, move that we approve the minutes of both September 10th and September 12th. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, item two, review and discuss vendor and payroll warrants. Are there any comments or questions? None for me. From either public comment, are there any members of the public here who would like to provide comment up to three minutes in person, uh, three minutes per person on items not on the agenda? Are all the folks in the uh, ah, yes, can I yeah. just chime in and say I need more counselors for election night? So, anybody watching, please feel free to contact me. I think like five more people, I feel like five more people will be all set. Excellent, yeah. Can, can elected officials do the county? Yeah, as, as, long as, long as, as long as you're not on the boundary. As long as you're not on the boundary. Oh, okay. Yeah. And yeah. at what time do you, what time do people need to start? 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Yeah. And 8 p.m. till we're done. Till we're done. <laughs> but if I can get 20 counters, that is 10 teams, which means if we get a full 1,100 voters, each team would get like two pages of tally sheets to do, and it will be out. It's like when we're folding the scoop. Yeah. And six people More show up. It's like better. done in 35 minutes. Yes. Right. Now, it might not be 35 minutes in this case. No, but, but it will you, not be 35 minutes. Um, but <laughs> but it, it, yeah, it, it could be a, an hour or two rather than like. Yes. It'll be stretch. an hour or two as opposed to five six. or six. Okay. So the yeah. more people I can get, the better. Oh, I wonder if recruiting at the fall festival would be. Ooh. Oh, because there's a lot of civic minded is, people. What's next Sunday? Sunday. 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 Yeah. 29. Yeah. 29. Do that. You're not going to be here. Is anybody yeah. else? I'll, I'll be out of town. Yeah. I'll be there. I'll be there. We'll see if we can. Will yes. you recruit? Yeah. 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 So I'll after the meeting, I'll be in touch and maybe I can get like a sheet or something together. Yeah. If, but, if either of you would be willing to. Like maybe take some names and email and phone number of people yeah. who might be interested. Yeah. Okay, that would Let's be see fantastic. If we can see hey, and people watching this at home. Hey, <laughs> can you count? Yeah. <laughs> That's all you need to be able to yeah. get. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can you make check count? marks and columns? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Thank you so much. All right. Next, we have appointments, and we're six minutes early. Review and vote on vote votes to vote on the host community agreements for debilitating medical condition treatment centers, as well as Green Gene Farms LLC and also Toro Verde, Massachusetts Three Incorporated. Uh, Pete, do you want to explain the, the different yeah. host community agreements? Sure. Here? 
So um, we developed a singular host agreement that we're using for all of the applications. It is based on the model language from the Cannabis Control Commission um, with some edits uh, based on our town council, but also we went back and forth with our applicants to make sure that everybody um, was on the same page in agreement with those minor, what we deem were minor modifications uh, just to provide better clarity and protections. Uh, in each one of these agreements, it's, it does follow the Cannabis uh, Commission's requirements and their model, but we did include in there the one area where the town can specify general occurring fees. Um, in this, we simply reaffirmed that the applicant or the, the company it is um, still uh, responsible for any permit application fees, any other local charges or fees. Um, that also, if they if they need any consulting or do it have any consultants to support them in any of their operations, that that is their sole responsibility. That it's not borne by the municipality. Um, just putting it in the agreement, clearing it so that there is no question. But those are normal standard practices. Um, but we can't add in additional fees because of the new regulation. So, um, and we do also include in here a section nine called cooperation. This is a custom section that we added in. It simply um, says that the company will maintain a cooperative relationship with the municipality um, and periodically meet with representatives as needed. And that also the company will make a good faith effort to support any municipality sponsored educational programs related to risk of cannabis abuse and underage use of cannabis. This section um, simply says that we are going to work in partnership together, but it doesn't force or require that because we know that using those words would likely create a conflict with the CCC. So we just wanted to put in encouraging language, um, but it does um, try to create um, that cooperation between the company and the municipality. Um, all three companies have reviewed their the agreements um, with their specifications in there. They all agreed. There is one section that is has been added, which is the indemnification clause. Um, it's section twelve. This provides protections to both the municipality and company that they will hold one another and indemnify um, one another um, in case there are any um, disagreements or cases. Uh, essentially, this one section does not exist in the model language. In some agreement reviews, the CCC has approved indemnifications. In other reviews, they have denied the indemnification clause. There is no um, definitive understanding whether the CCC will allow this clause in here. However, if the CCC does come back and say it's non-compliant, the board can review and agree to remove the section. Um, it will not throw the companies out of the process. Um, it does mean that we can simply make a modification and correct the non-compliance. Um, otherwise, everything else should be in line with what the CCC is looking for. Each company has one agreement except for DMC. DMC has three lines of business or three types of cannabis um, operations. They have cultivation, manufacture, and retail. Um, in discussing with the DMC, there, there was a preference. I preferred that we separate them, um, namely because if they were ever to exit from one of these types of business, then the agreement itself can become null and void. If we had done them all together, then we would have to amend the agreement. So it's just cleaner to keep uh, one agreement per each type of business, um, which they were fine with. It simply means additional paperwork, but all that's different in each one of the agreements is the check mark as to the type of business and the location of that operation. Okay. And yes, that was the three different locations. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. And it's like, the same price we're giving them three <laughs> for the same price as we charge for one so that's a part of so it yeah all righty any questions yeah. or I, i've got two things one is that none of these agreements 
had checked off courier, delivery, operator, transporter. So even though we've got code, we've got code. So far we don't have no, the, So far we just don't sim have. simply being a retailer does not allow you to. You have to do it if that's that, okay. that just, yes. just yep. making sure of that. None of them requested that. And the other thing is in section five, paragraph six, uh, in Palestine, not attempt to collect PIFs for a company to sell final license for more than nine years. So that means essentially after if the place has been in place for nine years, we can no longer collect it, if, even if there's an impact. Yeah, on us. We Basically, yeah. There's a what's that called in law? Statute, Statute of limitation. limitations. There's a nine year limitation here. Where if we somehow missed a CIF and it's been over nine years old, at that point now it's null and void. We can't collect on it. But it's not like if there's impacts in year twelve, we can still file for those in year yes. twelve. It's just that nine years. You got nine years to. Get your paperwork done, and if you can't get it done in nine years, then I, well, I don't I, read it that way. I don't read oh. it that way either. I'm reading it oh. as if a, if the business has been there nine years, we can't it's collect. Clear. It's this isn't collecting. You're right. I mean, it should be something like should not attempt to collect outstanding CIFs, which are nine or more. Well, years that's old. what a. Uh... A claim CIF is defined as it okay. means that it's um it is outstanding because it has not been and it has not been okay, verified. But, but either way, the way this reads is yes, if the business has been there nine years, you can are no correct. longer collect anything. Correct. That they essentially have established themselves as a business and that beyond that nine once they've been in operation of nine years. So even if they're you know, every year there's some impact fee that we've been collecting. After nine years, we can no longer collect that. That is the current regulation. Yes. That's the regulation. That the this state. is the actual regulation. From the, the state. The state okay. Yeah. Okay. So this isn't a statute of limitation on the law. No, sorry. Oh, yeah. It's not. No. But no. but this is okay. explicitly from the CCC based on their regulation. Oh, okay. I yeah. didn't get that. Hmm. Hey, well, so the why it should be because yeah. you know, if there was some, I don't know that it'll affect us, but if there's something that had required a big police presence, yeah, all of a sudden they can't get reimbursed for it. Mm -hmm. But I think the this agreement though only runs till it runs for five years, right? Which means it, that, yeah, but if this got renewed in the next agreement, these. The nine years doesn't start anew. It's, and no, it, but my point is that when you license. when you do a new license, maybe the regulations will change where that is no longer a relevant okay. clause any longer. Especially because they've changed so much. Yeah, because at that point we should know are there mm -hmm. consistent CIFs that happen every single year that the municipality should be able to recoup even okay. beyond that nine year point. Okay. So although there is that nine year, this agreement is only for five years. For now, next one could come in. Yes. Yeah. The next one, we're going to talk about it. <laughs> That's all I've got. <clears throat> Joyce, anything? Uh, no, not really. I mean, another, oh, I won't make sure in. Another case where the state has decided to know better than anybody else about anything in spite of their, well, public problems, which all right. Okay. I'm not turning it, it into a rant. It's not a rant yet. It's not a rant yet. It's an... uh, do any of the representatives of the companies want to speak? You're from Green Jeans? Yes. Julie. Okay. Anybody via Zoom? Hi. Hi. This is, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Hi, my name is David Julian. I'm just, I'm an attorney at Vicente here on behalf of Tora Verde. So, I just want to say we appreciate your your help and your cooperation with this process. There's a, a lot of regulations and restrictions from the CCC that are sort of just cannot be modified. And uh, this agreement is subject to those. So um, we appreciate it. I, I did want to mention the indemnification. Um, as it was mentioned, that may get kicked back. Um, I've seen that rejected before. So 
Uh, if that does happen, we would just, you know, need to reappear before you or if you have some sort of delegation of authority to the town administrator to modify it. But in, in some way, it would need to just become compliant um, without that provision or some sort of different type of provision that captures that uh, in order to ultimately be approved by the commission. So thank you so much for, for your time. We, we really appreciate it. Thank you. I would entertain oh, I, I, did, I didn't notice any, is there was any kind of severability. Yes. Yeah. I'm, there is. I'm just trying to think that if, if that got yeah taken out, that whether that would void the agreement or. Well, I think we would, I would, I mean, unless the board wanted to say that you give me the ability to have for that one section to amend, but otherwise I would bring it back to you so that you finalize a new version of the agreement as opposed to, uh, I think the severability here is based on if there's anything that after it gets finalized and approved by the CCC that then needs to be removed. It does not actually render the rest of the agreement. No. Correct. Court competent jurisdiction. I don't think the commission constitutes a court of competent jurisdiction for um, an administrative body. They um, they um, gave themselves that right. <laughs> barely an administrative body. Oh, okay, that was okay. <laughs> they are just barely okay. <clears throat> okay. No. All right. Um, oh, so you you said you'd entertain a motion. I would entertain a motion. Move that we approve the whole stack of one, two, three, and one of those. So five post community agreements uh, for DMCTC, Green Jeans Farms, and Toro Verde, respectively. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, I would also move just to expedite at this point that we give Pete the authority to um, update the agreement without bringing it back to the board if we get pushback on indemnification. Um, oh, so you like moving to say, well, if the indemnification if gets rejected back. by the Cannabis Control Commission and that's so that's it. That's that's the right, only that thing. you have yeah. to take the indemnification yeah. clause out. Because we're we're sending it to them with the understanding that it could get kicked back and yes. just to move the process along. Um so would that mean then what would that mean? It would mean you like, take it out, yeah, retype it, and we just have to sign it. We don't need a second spouse. Yeah. No, yeah, I it would just be Julie. It was, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Julie is the only one that has. she re she'll represent the board in her okay. But yeah, I, I, it, rather than us having to go to a public meeting, I could just amend it, ask Julie to come by, sign it, and then okay. the others. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't second that. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, it would be a missed opportunity for a rant, but <laughs> there are always letters to the editor. Um, 6 30. We're running a little early. It looks like Krista yeah. Minto might be present. Yeah. Thank you, Julie. Uh, Krista Minto might be present. Um, to, to introduce herself to the board regarding an upcoming filming project in Waitley and the surrounding area. Hi, I, I am present. How are you all? We're good. Would you be able to put your camera on? Yes, I am. I am coming right off of a tech scout and I am putting my camera on in about two minutes. <laughs> Just, okay. um, but it is it is really lovely to meet you all. And I'm so thankful to be invited to this. So thank you for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you here. What made you pick this area? So um, my writer and director actually lives in Haydenville. Um, with his wife and their two young babies and his in-laws are in Coleraine. So the script was entirely inspired by uh, the local area. Interesting. And I am, uh, I'm now in my 
car and I can do my video. Give me one sec. Let's see if I can figure this out. What, what, what I think you said was, I just hold off to the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. It's funky if you're on your phone. So I wonder if she just accidentally. Yeah, I, I've i never it's hit the wrong video. button when I'm using my phone. So yeah. I didn't understand what that <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, the, the interface is friendly as possible. Uh, in terms of display for anybody watching on TV or YouTube, is yeah. that what they see, or is this what they that's see? That's what they see. Okay, all right. Yeah. So yes. they're not seeing the big black screen no. that says no. administrative. No. Dot, dot, yeah. dot. no. Yeah. Good. This just makes sure that the way that. this is set up, make sure that whoever's speaking pops up to that's, the screen. We provide real entertainment right. yeah. here. But she didn't yeah. pop up. <laughs> she she didn't. did not. Well, she did pop up, but her camera was well, so. But I'm right 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 She did. Oh, she did. Yeah. Okay. It said right. Krista's iPhone. Oh, Wait, that was here. not the right button. <laughs> there we go. Hi, everyone. It's so nice to see you. Hi, Hi. nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, Great. Tell us a little bit more about your project. Yeah, so um, I'm from New York. I'm a producer. Um, I produce in the independent space. My last two features were just in the Cannes International Film Festival this year in France. So... Um, coming off of that to then produce Michael Morantz's directorial debut. So it's his first time doing a film of this size. Uh, he's known for his short film work. So, you know, because he has just had such a positive experience living in the community now for about five years, he wanted to write something really specific to, to, to the greater, you know, the, the greater Shelburne Falls area. Um, and you know, the script is, it's a dramatic thriller. So it follows the story of a retired true crime podcaster who uh, his wife makes him retire because he's spending a little too much time running around and not enough time at home. But, um, you know, his sister, who's the black sheep of the family, she ends up going missing. So she lives in Maple Falls, which is uh, Shelburne Falls, <laughs> the town of. Okay. And we're filming in all sorts of pockets, you know, uh, the town of Shelburne, the town of Buckland. Um, we're filming in Cole Rain. Um, my director's in-laws have a beautiful farm up there. So we're filming at their home. Uh, they let us, you know, welcomed us in. And of course, you know, with, you know, your, you know, you, if you'd welcome us, we'd hope to participate at the Waitley Diner, which is uh, iconic and so stunning. And we film a fun little scene in there, um, you know, of course, with your hospitality. So I'm really appreciative. Cool. Will there be any Samuel Jackson getting on the table and <laughs> pontificating scenes? Or no. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. I, when I met with Noria or Noria, I don't know how to say it, but I met with um, their lovely marketing team. You know, they were like, we just have to ask you um, anything like really bad happen. And I'm like, yeah. I don't know if anything is worse than Dexter. Uh, <laughs> but I was, like, I was like, somebody gets shot in the movie. Uh, <laughs> but nah, it's, um, you know, it's shaping up to be a really special piece. And even though we're an independent film, we, you know, we still have to do all the bells and whistles with SAG regulation and, you know, union regulation for my crew and crew and actor safety. So, um, you know, that's why I first met, you know, with the town and they were so considerate and so helpful and just, you know, talking through what to expect. We're a small crew, no road closures, you know, no stunts, no explosions, nothing wild. You know, it's, it's two people having breakfast in a diner, but um, I still just, I'm a believer in always just being transparent and introducing myself when I come into a new town. So, you know, it really mattered to me to have this conversation. Okay. Can you tell us the titles of your two films that were in Cannes? Yeah, so one is called, it's a Christmas movie, actually. Um, it was the first Christmas movie in Cannes which was very funny to see people in Santa hats on the French Riviera. Um, <laughs> but it's called Christmas Eve in Miller's Point, and it premiered at the director's fortnight, the Kanzanic Can. And then the second one was Ephis, which is 
a baseball comedy and an ephus is a painfully slow pitch and the film mirrors the painfully slow pacing it is very funny but very drawn out so do not watch it if you're tired because you might fall asleep <laughs> Unless you need a nap. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you need a nap. I um I had a short film that was there as well this year, um, called T with Michael Gandolfini, which is James Gandolfini's son. So it was um I've aged rapidly in the past six months, I think, but it's all all from uh, from good things. But you've gotten to eat French cheese and drink French wine. It was great. And you know, French wine has less sulfites. So I was not hung over, which was very <laughs> lovely. <laughs> yeah. Any questions, no. conversation, I et think cetera? You, you've grilled her thoroughly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. There's there's a developer looking at, at some point, um, doing some work in the area of the Waitley Diner. And we have great affection for the diner yeah. so if at any point we need to call you in to say keep the diner keep the diner may we do so i will i'm your girl anything you need all right, all right. <laughs> Aww. thank you for appearing before us Good thank, you. thank you so much and if i need extras i'm gonna be calling okay so mm -hmm. you better you better answer my phone call too <laughs> Oh, yeah, I hope your extras have gray hair because yeah, I yeah, love too. Look, it's coming. <laughs> I'm an actress. All right, yes. great. Yes. All right, thank you, Chris. Lovely nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. See you soon. Excellent. We're getting famous, yeah. huh? Oh yeah, and we didn't even need to vote on that. Yeah. Town mm -hmm. clerk, review and vote on request for police detail for the November polls. Amy. Hello. So I am just per Mass General Law, they select for each to approve police details for election day. So I'm looking for a detail in the during the day and in the evening and an escort from the polls to the office with the ballots mm -hmm. when everything is done and counted for. Mm -hmm. This is something that's coming from the Department of Homeland Security, who I just spent like four hours with today. And um, they recommended the states the um have police have let me back up. I'm sorry, I'm really tired. Um the Department of Homeland Security recommended that the state recommend that we have police details for this November election. Um for safety and security purposes. I would feel more comfortable having a police detail outside. We have the constables inside, but we can't really see what's happening outside. Mm -hmm. So I would feel more comfortable if we had eyes outside as well. The detail, I don't have enough in my budget, but Jim does have money in his budget for the detail. He has extra detail money in his budget that mm -hmm. he said he could cover. But I also spoke with Rain, who is part of the Department of Homeland Security, and there is a grant to pay for the detail. Yeah, I was noticing that. Yeah, the money yeah. hasn't been released yet, so they're not sure how much money they will have. Okay. But I am first on the waiting list when that funding amount does become available. Good to be first. Yes. Um, I know that there was some question about will this intimidate voters and things like that. And we have kind of had a, I don't want to call it a soft detail, but police are present pretty much all day at the polls anyway while they're on patrol. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not something that residents would be like, oh, why do we have police here now? Because they they've been there at least since I've been doing elections. They've been there, and I get an escort back anyway. Mm -hmm. This is just something putting it set in stone, so I don't have somebody on patrol in case they have to be called away. Right. And this is just for the November election because it's such a big election, and people can get heated, and sometimes emotions can get the better of us. Mm -hmm. Um, having a presence will kind of you know. Hopefully, maybe make people think twice about getting up, getting 
I think, I, I think, yeah. The, the the yeah. And our, our police department is very community based. So I, I don't, you know, I'm not asking for a SWAT team <laughs> with mob shields and stuff like that. Like it's soccer <laughs> or whoever. So that's so, what I, I met with um, the gentleman for, from the, the Department of Homeland Security today. Like I said, we went over the election space at the town hall, and it wasn't just about police details. It was a whole security assessment. He also came here because I do early voting, and he um, didn't just look at it from an election perspective, but he actually looked at the entire building. Mm and the security in our office space here and outside. I won't get the report. He said probably about 10 days. Mm -hmm. I'll get the report from our meeting today. It was very good and he had some great suggestions. And um, he was also telling, telling me about, there's so much grant money out there. So if we want to install a panic button, which is something that he suggested, there's grant money for it. Okay, and things like that. And then taking that report to kind of back up your request mm -hmm. for these um, grants. Yes, really, really. Important. I'm not yeah. doing anything until I yeah. get that report no. back. And no, then I, obviously, I'm going to work with Pete right. and with everybody that needs to be worked with to yeah. maybe implement some of the things that that we spoke about today. Mm -hmm. Um. I did poll, I did do a poll to the um, Massachusetts clerks and only 10% that answered back just use constables. Mm -hmm. Those constables are armed. 90% said, especially for the November election, police details. And that's what the state's recommending. That's what the federal government's recommending. I'm not looking for this for like the local elections, but just for this one, and that's yeah. up to the select board to decide. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for the amount of research and um, back, yeah, backstory you put in. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Yeah. appreciate yeah. your back. I was asking was yeah. out in left field too. You yeah. know what I mean? Appreciate because it very yeah. much. Like, okay, I want police details, but I want facts to back up. Like, why? It's a good mm -hmm. idea. Why I would want those. That very much so. appreciate yeah. you getting the facts and presenting them to us. And even though like the, the response, some of the responses here where they put some narrative in are like, we call it anic data, where not because it's as opposed to like hard number data. Right. Anic data is still data. Right. And some of these like towns where you like boy, like that that town. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. That town had somebody where they had to yes. physically that it was physically assaulting. Yeah. Yes. Like, I did have yeah. a, you know, I hate I hate to say it, but I did have a resident get pretty heated with me in the March primaries. Mm -hmm. And we were able to like Yeah. Well that's the situation, yeah. but it occurred to me that mm -hmm. one of the nice things is our police do have training in de escalation. And yes. one of the things that yep. they get continued training on. Yeah. Um and uh, and with that being the emphasis, um, I I would well, I would support this request. I guess is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, especially given you're you're not looking for Zach out there with swords and shields, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But but the like, like, cruiser would be yeah, right? <laughs> like the cruiser would be parked there, and he may be standing yes. nearby, or maybe in yes. the cruiser, or he may be, you know, he, he doesn't have to be out at the door checking IDs or anything. No, he would not that, be. Yeah, in a lollipop. Right. Yes. So oh, that's exactly yes. what the gentleman from DHS said today. He's like, even having a cruiser parked there uh -huh. may deter <clears throat> somebody with malintent to do mm. something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fred, you seem as if you were going to say something. No, just, I, I worry about the intimidation factor, but we'll defer. To yeah. It is something I thought about, and that's why I brought up the fact that our, our police are very community-based. Mm -hmm. I think if it were in a big city and there was like that disconnect, it might be a little different, but our I feel like our police force is very community-based. And... Yeah. Yeah. And I, and and I think one of the good things about our police department is 
they they take training seriously. Yes. Yes. And uh, and Jim does a lot of the training himself. Part because we don't necessarily give him the biggest budget for, <laughs> for that sort of thing, but um, he makes that budget go a long way by being the one who, who heads up the training system. And I know de-escalation is a big one. That we yeah. Do. Well, I would accept a motion. I move that we approve the town court's request for a single police officer detail at this year's election on November 5th. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Thank you, Amy. Next up, digital equity plan. Discuss and vote on priorities from the adopted plan. Um, Pete was kind enough to, in his administrator's packet, go through and point out the things that we had been interested in last time we were discussing it. Yeah. Uh, on that, I want to read it. I read this, but the day I got it, I think. Of course, I can't remember it. But no, okay. Go on. I just want to say out loud two things. Um, I will be meeting with uh, Cindy at the library tomorrow to discuss the free local Wi Fi um, access, and I will be asking her what kinds of devices they have that are available to the community and do they do what she thinks the community needs or do we need more or do we need something to be updated? I also contacted and received a response from the town of Leverett regarding their experience in creating a town-owned um, yes. ISP and they are happy to meet with any or all of us and discuss it. Oh. Thank so you. we can invite them in here. We can have you know one select board member and Pete meet with them and we'll come back to salient points. Um, please. Uh, um, I feel like we could appoint one of us mm -hmm. to follow up and that it'll mean easier to schedule mm -hmm. um, than scheduling right than scheduling something out. With uh, the three people, and I don't know how many on the other side. At least one. At least one. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I, would, I would think that that'll. I mean, think it might be more efficient use of our time. That's to do probably that. true. Yeah. And Pete, would you be willing to? Yeah. Be a second on that. Does anybody want to volunteer for that? Well, I feel like you know, as the resident physics teacher. Um, I, I I feel like I'm uh, up with the technology in spite of my gray hair. Uh, because I, of your gray yeah. hair, years of experience. Yeah, I, I, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, but I I think that's I feel like that's up my alley. Right. And we've also been doing the, the I'm okay. negotiating committee for the and yes, and I'm and I'm in the oh, cable committee. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay, so I will put you in touch with the person I have been corresponding with. Well, excellent. Uh, a goal two recommendation. Yeah. I have it marked on the one that I brought last time. I have a new copy now. Okay. It's too there. Shape Miller has situation. Yeah. Um, right. That's second one or the uh, goal to second one. Negotiate lower net internet lower internet subscription rates so with current local ISP. I think there's there's a limit to what we could accomplish there, but mm -hmm. we have to try. Mm -hmm. And if there's actually potential funding sources there, yeah, then yeah. I, um, I think that goal is
And you were saying the one uh, right below that establishing, you're going to talk to the library about the device lending program. Yeah. So that's on the goal three page as well. Yeah, not just the device lending program, but their access in within the library. And the access library. within the library. Yeah. And that was under Golden. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Under goal three, we had not checked off or flagged. Um, cybersecurity programming and partnership opportunities to educate residents about topics like scam prevention. I, I would consider that pretty important. I'm yeah. pretty savvy. I work on the computer all day long and we're getting really good. Every now and then I've almost been taken in. So but I quite consistently send out yeah. emails to friends and family saying, be careful about this. That was the expand general digital letters or yeah. Uh, under, oh, three, number number three. Oh, yeah. oh cyber security program okay. partnership opportunities. Yeah, that was uh, not got yeah. a potential funding source, but it's not one that we are likely to have to incur costs. Yeah, yeah. If those supporting partners actually have um Programs. Yeah. yeah, and I think the senior center does at least a little bit of this. I don't yep. know which of these partners. Um, I can't remember. We we have so many things going on there that I I don't remember which partners they might be using for that. But I think that's the, uh, I, that concentrates on the seniors, and this yeah shouldn't be wider. Yeah. Yeah, I like having that one. And then the, are you saying that you, you have not been talking about um, a device lending device lending program? I have not, but I will. Because I think that can uh, that can make a difference yeah. for, for people who are on the you know, device poor end of things. We yeah. we don't necessarily need a thousand devices to lend out, but right. Yeah, in some places it'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If we had five, that would be that would be meaningful. I'm remembering the old days because it's the Sunderland Library or Lever. They you could sign out a fishing pole. Really? Oh yeah. Yeah. How uh, times have changed. Um yeah, yes, fishing with an Yes, yeah, um, uh, <laughs> the two of you are we at a point where we want to vote on priorities? Um, yeah, and establish, I don't know, five, six, seven of them. Well, it looks like there's six there's listed, and I think I, I, I still agree with all those I think that we discussed yeah. last yeah. time. Um, and I think. On um, two, I didn't hit another. On um, goal three, if we added cybersecurity, that would make seven. And if we added the device lending, that would make eight. Would eight be too many things? Yeah. Um, especially that? because the cybersecurity <laughs> one is not going to involve grant writing. Right. It's it's going to be no. Learning more about what is freely available from the partners. Yeah. And that won't be a great agreement. So there won't, well, if it's a great, if you need a grant, there's no place to get one, <laughs> according to this yeah. study. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it says that it, no new costs anticipated. So yeah. Um, yeah. It sounds like those resources might be already be available. Um, yeah. And those are short and medium term goals. So yeah. So yeah. So it gives us. Short, medium, 
Long line, three lines, four, medium, medium. Yeah, I think we've got a good yeah. distribution. Yeah, good. Three lines, uh, I'll say three medium and three short because one of them says both short and medium. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so that doesn't add up to eight. All right, so I'm aware of that. It's a good mix of things. Well, if and, we like those goals with the addition of cybersecurity and device lighting, I would accept the motion. All right. Uh, all right. I move that we um, uh, let's try that. Look up for the wording here. That we select the, the goals uh, as printed here, or goal one, um, maintain, promote, approve three public Wi-Fi locations. Promote and support the B Challenge program to address dead zones and inconsistent connection and distribute digital devices to covered population. Uh, on the selection of service, a long term goal considering alternatives to our major ISPs. Uh, the second, negotiating lower internet subscription rates with our local ISPs. Those are both long term goals and then some more uh, short and medium term goals uh, to explore cybersecurity programming to consider a fund to create digital education curriculum and establish a library device lending program. And uh, of course, in modernizing is it's seen on site devices. I will second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> we are burning through this. We are. We really are. Okay, new business, special town meeting warrant. <laughs> Pete, would you like to describe yes. what's going on? Yeah. So a few things. Um, the first is I'd like to ask the board to vote to move the date. Oh. Um, in discussing the free, ca free cash certification process with the town accountant, there's concern that we will not have it certified in time for October 22nd. Um, November 12th is a far safer date. That was our second date option. So I would like to ask that we push it to November 12th. It is the day after Veterans Day, a week after the election. Uh, our town clerk will not be available, but the assistant town clerk will be able to act in her place. Um, We'll ask our resident board member if uh, the yeah, moderator is no, be available. Well, <laughs> I, I, as, as far as I know, he's put nothing on my calendar. <laughs> 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 uh, but probably we we, we should um, we should probably ask. But I I expect his answer will be um, done, that he's good. I know he has some travel planned, but that's the following week. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we don't want to get too close to Thanksgiving either. Yeah. I, like that, so that, others might be traveling as well. Yeah, yeah, I would, yeah, I would expect a positive answer. Okay, but I don't want to be asked. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll accept a motion to reschedule the fall twenty twenty four special town meeting. I move to reschedule the special town meeting to November twelfth. Wow, uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 7 p.m. at town offices. Okay. Okay. So that's one thing. The next is the finance committee did meet last week to review all of the financial articles except for the CPIO. Um, the FinCom did vote in the affirmative to recommend favorable favorable action on all of those financial articles. There was one modification that they did request, though, in Article One. This is the um, paying the prior fiscal year bill, the outstanding bill for assessing. Originally, the proposal was to use free cash. The um, FinCom would prefer using our reserve funds instead it's just 450 dollars we have twenty thousand in that reserve fund we did just appropriate 179 from that for recreation so we have um 19,821 so 
Um, they just would rather use the reserve fund because that's what it's there for, for this particular instance. It is a prior year bill though, so that's why town meeting would still need to vote on it. But um, okay. so it's just the funding source that's modified here. Um, but otherwise, all of the numbers they agreed to. Um, also, there is one request or modification that I would like to suggest in, in Article 8. Article 8 is the dangerous dog order and the costs that have accumulated. We obviously can only um, pay for costs in the current fiscal year. The, the, the bills that we already paid were fine. We already paid the, the June bill. So I originally estimated 6,500. Uh -huh. July's sheltering invoice was $1,550. August was the same because there are 31 days in both months. September, the order was carried out this Monday, meaning that September's invoice for the sheltering service will be $1,150. Euthanization, is, we haven't gotten the final bill. I'm using a high estimate of 600. It was likely going to be closer to 500, but just for estimating purposes. We also received our August bill from KP with the um, cost of $1,728 for this, this particular line item. If we include all of those dollar amounts, it comes to $65.78. So it's basically on par with the estimate with the likely coming down. So my request to, to the board is should we include the legal fee or do you want to take that out of our standard operating line for legal, just understanding that that operating line does cover our legal costs throughout the year. This was a sizable amount to take out for one issue, uh, but it's totally up to the board. Mm -hmm. I'd be inclined to take it all out as one lump related to one, one issue. Event, mm -hmm. one yeah. issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So stick with the 65, right. 100, Knowing that it may well be, um, yeah, that, that's rather than have to look into different accounts yes. to see what's going to do. Yeah. yeah, and I will have a more definite, a, a more solid number at the next meeting because by then, from the vet service, I will have that yeah, no. that other okay. cost. Um, so yeah. you'll know the definite dollar amount. But at present, this state road where we are, if we do include the legal, we'll still be in line with what the fin Kyle already agreed to mm -hmm. uh, recommend. Okay. So I would just be modifying the language in the comment to say that the it will include the bills for sheltering, the organization, and the legal fees. Yeah. What account did the June payment come out of? Out of our um, revolving account. The, the no, dog would, license. Would, would, there, would there be any reason for us to take more of free cash to reimburse that account? We're already that was back in the previous oh, that was year. Previous, okay. Yep. All right. So that's why I'm not considering June okay. because that was a prior fiscal okay. year. So we're just looking at the current fiscal. Okay. Um and then a few more additions. Um there's the bylaw codification process uh that has been a work in progress for years now um which was originally brought forward to be included for annual town meeting it was asked to hold off because of the other zoning articles we need to get this moving and we need to get this codified um so i put in here the amendments for the general bylaw codification which includes some general revisions uh acknowledgement of bylaws being repealed and then some specific revisions which are noted in appendix a None of them are substantive. They're simply procedural as a process of making sure that we have uh, um, accurate record uh, references to current laws, correcting references to the select board, um, formatting, um, and the process to actually codify it. So we have the electronic process. That is Article 11. Articles 12 and 13 deal with the zoning bylaw codification process. Um, Article 12 is simply the renumbering of the zoning bylaw based on the new um, numbering process in the codification, uh, inserting article and section subtitles, a 
updating the references to reflect that new numbering system. And then the Article 13 is general amendments to the zoning bylaw. Um, this again it includes all changes to select board, select men, uh, to select board, singular word, uh, zoning bylaws to be read as zoning bylaw, board of appeals and zoning board, and zoning board of appeals all to be one phrase. Uh, and then some general um, specific rec uh, amendments in Appendix B. All of those are simply um, house cleaning. There were certain times where we adopted new districts, but we never actually included the district name in the list, which is it's all it is is just a reference that because you have a district, you should have had it in the list in Section 2. Uh, others are, are uh, getting our references to Mass Department of Public Works to, or yeah, Public Works to the Mass DOT. Um, generally, it's it, nothing is substantive. It's really just correcting, and um, it's more clerical than anything. Uh, but there is no actual changes other than cleaning up the language as part of the process to codify it. Um, if the board does want to include the zoning bylaw codification articles, it will have to go to a planning board hearing because it is considered still a zoning bylaw amendment because we are doing the renumbering and we are doing these um, edits and removals, um, which I've already talked with the chair. Uh, it would likely be a public hearing that would be held at their normal meeting on October 30th. We have plenty of time to advertise for that. Um, and that as long as their, their hearing is held prior to special town meeting, there's no problem with that. that there's no time. Yeah. It has to be within a certain time before town meeting. So procedurally, we'd be fine with doing that as well. So the question is just yeah. uh, making sure that the board is okay with including these additional articles. And if so, I just need yeah. to let the zoning planning board know that they need to hold that <laughs> zoning article hearing and I will attend that hearing in order to explain the zoning right. bylaw changes. Okay. And do we need to vote on the additional articles? Um so now we have a little extra time. Yeah. yeah. Um you can certainly I vote on the other articles if you'd like to vote on Yes, you want to include it, and whether you want to do a recommendation, or you could do that on October eighth. October eighth is what I'm going to recommend. We close. Yeah. Yep. So we'll we can do the votes, and we can close the warrant. Um, or you can do your votes tonight, and we can close the warrant next yeah. meeting. I have not just a. Uh, fortunately, I have not heard back from KP. They've acknowledged receipts of a couple versions of this, and I'm still waiting for edits. So, hmm. um. Definitely by October 8th, we should have edits, though, if anything, those will be reordering articles or possibly yeah. combining articles um, and just yeah. modifications of the article. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, I feel like Article 11 is something I would like to have a time. Like, I'd like to understand, like, the bylaw being repealed and there's like this list. I feel like I'm not familiar enough with those. And I I would take out some quality time with them before they are repealed. And I'm sure they're they're fine. I just want to understand what it is we're repealing. I assume these are things that are it says right bylaws being repealed, chapter seven, building code, chapter nine, building inspector of the nineteen eighty-eight code. Um, maybe all of these have been superseded by something. I just I, I, I just want to understand better. Right. They've already this, been is is that is that what you're talking about? I mean it, any it, any major um amendments or anything like that have to be approved at town meeting. Right, right. So this um, it seems that in the general bylaw under general bylaws here. Yeah. It says Article 11 bylaw codification to see if the town will vote to adopt changes to the general bylaws set forth in the final draft of the code. Da, 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 da. Um, by with the clerk, it says general revisions are changing the format of how you refer to mass general law and select board and selectmen. But then right under that is a list of bylaws being repealed. So if we like vote in favor of Article 11, it sounds like you're repealing all those. It's a list of seven, a list of seven being, chapters yeah. that are being. I see. Yeah. I don't have them. So I, that's. That was cool.
So, like, if we don't have a gas and plumbing inspector, is it just because that's in a different place now, or is this right? Uh, yes. Like, so most of these were were approved at town meeting this were, last June or whatever. No, several different town meetings. Multiple. This yeah. is, this has been they something in progress since 2016. Okay. This right. caught this recodification. So we don't have to vote to repeal these things. They've already been repealed. It's just by it's town meeting, sick. right? It just, but but the but original language is still in the bylaws as written. So we need to basically clean them, clean up the bylaws as written and update them. So we need to a definition, I think, of codification, which is to go in and actually put it in code. Publishing it. Publish it. So yeah. that, yeah, it was anytime, essentially, when the general bylaws, when you did a repeal, unfortunately, it was never published. It was never, repealed. right. It was never published with it. But why can't you just publish it? It was repealed at a town meeting. Why, I mean, why do we need to repeal it again if it was already repealed? Wait, so you're not, you're not voting to repeal it. You're just voting to make that correction in the current bylaws instead of so just saying instead of just saying that it's something right you can go in and print and then this is correct yeah article five say, section this, two yeah, this wording is wrong then this uh, vote is not I, repealing these it. it's so it's not these are not bylaws that are being repealed these are Have repealed been. bylaws Right, being, being removed by. from the published code that have so, already been yeah. approved at an, an annual town meeting right. or a special like town removal meeting. of repealed bylaws. I, the purpose, like I, I would be interested before the, approving this on each of these to get sort of part of the chapter and verse on at what town meeting these were each individual one was repealed. Just, well, that's, 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 that, that's what they say. It's, they it's, it's well, says, it says adopted I, by it, adopted that, by Article One of the December 11, 1974 Special Town Meeting. Well, yes, but when was it repealed? That when oh, was, I understand what you're saying. Right to know exactly that we know that each of these. Oh, was, so adopting had, Article One at the December 11, 1974 meeting when, was to repeal when, Chapter Seven of the Building Code Board of Appeals. No, it sounds. It looks at least from this wording. That the Chapter Seven was adopted by Article One of in 1970. Uh, when there's, was no, there's no note of when it was. When it was, it was, it was, it was I understand. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I can. I and can. Just, guys, just to sort of cross teeth yeah, that I can make sure we're not repealing I have something that hadn't been previously repealed. Yeah, huge fire. Because right. if, if this is really all stuff that's been repealed, then I, I think we we would spend an hour at a special town meeting. Going over right, right. The, if, if I can't understand it, and the I reason why this stuff is listed though is because the what was formally published and what is being proposed as the final draft of code that's on hand, there's going to be a difference. Those differences include these general revisions, these repeals, and these specific revisions in Appendix A, so that there's the the voting populace knows. What is changed and why you have the final version as uh, it right. provided in the. Yeah, so I, see, I'm completely confused. So I would not vote for it at special town meeting right now because I just don't understand it. And I, I think, first of all, the wording is wrong. The town bylaws being repealed, apparently they've already they been. They have yeah. been. These are bylaws being removed from the test. Yeah. Or, or codified. So, yeah. Or yeah. that the. Just or, to shrink the code a little, these are getting pulled right, out, right? right. Just noted in the code, repealed. Yeah. So, yeah, so I, I guess uh, a description of what we're actually doing. Right, a better description of what we're doing. And I yeah, we still like to get right. just a note on each one when at what town meeting it was repealed. I think that would be great for the general public. <laughs> yeah, right. because that's people would understand. Right. Making sense out of it. Right. Because I got a little in back. Of, I, got, I just want to make sure we're not. Removing something from the code which actually has not been repealed. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Good. Okay. So we will not uh, vote on this article this 11. Point. Yeah. yeah. We will. But I wouldn't have any trouble with uh, uh, 12 and 13. Because one, it's really just it's renumbering it given all the other changes. Right. And then. Uh, 
all of these others are just changing wording to make it consistent. So would you like to and move to add articles 12 and 13 to the can I special tell you something about yeah. that? Yeah. Wait, um, yeah. the stuff that was passed at this past annual town meeting hasn't been approved by the AG yet. So on the zoning changes that we made at the yeah, we deleted it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm waiting for the AG's approval, which should approve by now. So I'm hoping that it, that that approval comes before that, but if it comes after it, it's fine. We can still make that modification. Okay. The the point being that the final draft dated March 2024. That's being referenced obviously does not include those removals. Right. So it would have to be added as an yeah. amendment yeah. and then added. So, yeah, so, yeah. so we're going to have to like vote on another thing to actually delete the stuff we've voted to delete. Right? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's more just so it's, thankfully, I, once the codification is adopted, any changes after that, we don't have to do it twice. Super easy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The, the simple amendment is the yeah. amendment, and then we republish because we're now codified and we're just republishing through the, the platform. Yeah, you don't have to approve putting it into the bylaws yeah. because we've already approved it at town meeting. Right. I yeah. know it's, 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 it's confusing right. and it took me a long time. It's what we don't want to have to too much. Yeah. It started in 2016 and I found yeah. it all buried on my desk last year when I started. I was like, hmm, maybe we should finish this. <laughs> Good for you. I'm going to suggest that in the interest of moving along that yeah. we uh, tidy up all of this at the October 8th meeting and right. close the warrant on at that time. Sure. Um, yeah, and vote on. But again, and vote on adding those. Right. Yes. Yeah. But it I sounds mean, like we're generally okay with including this, so right. we understand it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, you just can say that. We're Some clarification. Yeah. yeah. What we have here is good, except we don't want to finalize it yet. Yeah. 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 Excellent. <clears throat> Next item would be business personnel request to post opening for planning board and zoning board of appeals administrative oh. assistance. <laughs> Um, so the, the select board did appoint the planning board ZBA admin assistant back in June. Um, it did go really well during the summer. Um, unfortunately though, the, um, individual who was working, this is a very part-time position. Um, the individual that was supporting in that role, once they got into the school year as a full-time teacher, realized it was going to be very difficult to actually juggle. And so she unfortunately did have to resign um, a couple weekends ago. So at this point, we now have that vacancy. Um, so I would like to post the job descriptions as we originally had them. Um, as you also know, we currently have an opening for the community development administrator. My, I would like when uh, going through the interview process for the CDAs to also make a mention about this admin assistant role to see if they would be also interested in applying for that. It would be, it would actually benefit us if we had a full-time person who was holding this other position because it'll be easier to retain them. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. When it's a very part-time position, and it's, unfortunately it does not hold yeah. individuals. Um, it's nothing against the role. It's just, it, we don't have the amount of demand and time, uh, but if we can add that to a, another role. So, um, my request right now, at least, is at least to post the vacancy. And if we are able to make a recommendation of the same individual for full roles, it would help us. Okay. Okay. Uh, will we post the opening for the planning board and the CPA administrative assistant? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Appointment of animal inspector. Okay. Um, so we did have a number of applicants, um, myself, 
Mike Arsball from the Board of Health and the police chief interviewed and we made a recommendation for, where is it, Megan? Sorry. Uh, Reardon. Reardon, Reardon um, who is a vet tech, has great animal experience, um, animal care experience. Um, and this is similar to what I was just referring to, an even more part-time role because it is a stipend position. Uh, this role does, they only have to deal with any rabies concerns, um, quarantining when necessary, but they do not have to do, they, we have an ACO, so the ACO would ever would take animals, they would support the animal inspector, the animal inspector is really just doing the rabies, reporting any concerns of rabies, um, providing information, and then doing our barn inspections, our annual barn inspections. Um, so for the most part, it's a lot of documentation and really just inspectional services. Would this person have to deal with if we had an outbreak of avian flu? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does cover animals in general. So yes, they would assist um, with that. That's been going on now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I would agree that we need to uh, point Megan Reardon. That's our animal inspector. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Agricultural preservation restriction is the next item. Notice of proposed acquisition of 269 River Road. Um, Pete, at which point do we need to read aloud the notice of proposed acquisition? Is that now? Yep. Already. Do you want to give a the background, or do you want me? You, you give the background, okay. and then I'll read out the. Yeah. So the town has been working with the Galinsky family in order to secure an agricultural preservation restriction on the property at 269 River Road. Um, what this does is helps to protect that land from development and preserve it for agricultural purposes. Um, there is significant process that goes into these protections. And one of those, that process step is where we are at tonight, where the select board does need to read from the notice of proposed acquisition, um, basically making sure that the residents are aware of what is happening with for, um, acquiring this restriction on that property. And that then allows for the next phase, which is where the state then works on finalizing and uh, securing that acquisition. There is a next, there is an additional step, um, which MDAR is recommending a reduction in the notification period under the current regulations. They're required to notify certain public officials, including the select board, of, the, of a proposed acquisition at least 120 days prior to the actual purchase, the closing. The notification being of informational purposes only, just making sure that you are notified that it's about to happen. Um, because this is a priority to protect the farmland, MDAR is asking the town to reduce that 120 day notification to 60 days. So they're just asking that the vote, that the board take a vote to reduce that notification period. Um, so there's two items to read the notice of proposed acquisition and then to discuss it and vote if you are willing to reduce that. Okay. And once the notice is read, do we have to sign something? The, um, yes, we have that like form there. The signature. That's for the note. That's for the reduction. Oh, you okay. don't have to sign anything with regards to the notification. Uh, we'll have the town clerk notarize. Oh, that. okay. All right. Okay. Notice of proposed acquisition of an agricultural preservation restriction on property in the town of Waitley. Date of this notice, August 25th, 2024. Notice of proposed acquisition is hereby given to Chairman of the Board of Selectmen of Town of Waitley or Mayor or City Manager of the City. Chairperson of the Select Board. Uh, in <laughs> separate notice will be given by the Department to the appropriate County Commissioners, Regional Planning Agency, and the members of the General Court representing the district in which the land is located in compliance with General Law Chapter 7C, Section 37, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, acting by and through its Department of Agricultural Resources, aka the Department, 
hereby gives notice that it proposes to acquire an agricultural preservation restriction, APR, on the real property identified herein for the purposes of protecting in perpetuity its superior and productive agricultural resources by preventing their conversion to other uses. The application received by MDAR indicates that the property is owned by Jonathan C. Galensky and Justin Galensky and consists of parcels located at 269 River Road in Waitley as approximately represented on the attached maps. The APR may encompass all or parts of the area shown. The current use of the property is primarily for row crops. Following the recording of the APR, the use of the subject property is limited to agricultural use as more particularly set forth in the APR document, the general laws, chapter 184, section 31, and the regulations of the department, 330 CMR 22A, et cetera. What is that? And subsequent. And subsequent Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources by Ms. Medula. Yeah. All right. All right. Good job. Thank you. Uh, now we need to move and discuss and move and vote on the request to reduce the notification period. Um, I would have no objection to. I mean, I don't think there's anything anybody's planning to to do to obstruct this. There's no reason to. I don't see. Any. Reason to not shorten by uh, it seems a reasonable request. Yeah. All right. Well, so, uh, go ahead. So then, so I uh, move that we approve the request to reduce the waiting period to sixty days. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Select board liaison update. Does anybody have anything to report? I have no report on the ends board oversight meeting that is happening now. <laughs> I have no report on the water department, nor do I have a report on the library that I will be meeting with Cindy Tara. Oh, um, I could go on all night about the senior center, <laughs> but um, uh, there, we, the uh, um, feasibility study is moving along. Awesome. We've had several meetings. Uh, at the last meeting, they actually mapped out um, a very high level, uh, you know, possible sites here uh, in Sunderland and Deerfield with costs associated with them, but they're very, uh, I, 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 everything has got like a 100% escalator. So that uh, it's really hard to believe that those prices will be the prices we actually end up mm -hmm. paying. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like uh, we're trying, but our, our next immediate task is to uh, cut down that three sites to two and then to have them actually look at that location specifically and like how would you put the kinds of spaces we want into those places as right now everything is just basically saying well you're gonna have to build 3,000 square feet and that's going to be 550 dollars a square foot plus your escalator is really a thousand anyway there's there's a whole bunch of estimates right now um the cost at the three different locations uh is not that different not significantly different. It's going to be something else besides cost and availability of parking. The uh, the the folks who are doing this say, "Hey, usually cost and parking are the things that really determine this." And it doesn't really. They're not different enough in cost. Um, and the cheapest one is also the one with the, kind of the worst location in the sense of that it's not central. Um, but uh, it, it also looks like the alternative in Deerfield uh, would require tearing down that church, which is not clear that the town will support. So there's, um, uh, anyway, we've got uh, uh, this coming, uh, sorry, a week from tomorrow, October 2nd, there will be at the Senior Center uh, place in Sunderland, um, the, the 
our little space, there's going to be a public forum. Cool. And the architects and folks from the, uh, the group doing their feasibility study, whose name, I, it's like Chris Watt, but I can't remember the name of his company, um, they'll be there. They'll have the, like three posters, those kind of three very general outlines, um, and get input from the community. When is this meeting again? This is 9 to 12. So it's sort of a thing where you walk in and there's going to be poster boards and you can write your comments on sticky notes. You can ask the questions, that sort of thing. Awesome. So that's going to be happening um, all Wednesday morning. I won't actually be there for As that. As in tomorrow? No, sorry. A week from tomorrow. Okay. A week October 2nd. Thank you. Um, and uh, so uh, if people care about this, they should go. Um, we... Uh, the uh, there was one other thing happening. There's that. Uh, no, that might have been the other thing I wanted to say. So that make people okay. uh, let people be aware of that. So then we plan to meet right after that uh, next week. We do our meeting Saturday mornings just because mm -hmm. I don't know we're really cool and uh, we plan to make a recommendation uh, about which sites oh, uh, we should uh, we should try and pursue. So that's one thing. So uh, the other thing that's going on is at the same time, we're kind of um, kind of pushing to change our, uh, right now we have a memorandum of, of understanding or we have a consort, a, a not, oh, what's the name of our agreement again? I didn't, I didn't prepare a formal report. No, we want to switch <laughs> to a consortium, consortium. agreement yeah. um, because now or in the future, we may want to acquire property. If we ever are in a position to acquire property, oh, uh, a okay. consortium would allow a much more equitable way of dividing the responsibility for any such property. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing it would do for us, even if we never buy property, it would give us more, uh, it would expand the board to, besides three selectmen, there would be three counts on aging reps from each, or one from each town. To because I think we're ready for that. Yeah. I think ten years ago we weren't really ready for that, but we are now. Um, so that's going on. We would like to, and maybe this is something I've got to chat with Pete more about. We would like to try and get that onto this year's annual town meeting because it would require uh, an annual town meeting vote to change our municipal structure. Um, so. Uh, that's something we got um, this agreement. Pete took a good look at it, gave us lots of comments. We haven't yet got comments from the Deerfield and Sunderland town and mints, but there's churn happening there. So it's understandable. Uh, we'll hopefully get some input from them and then see if, you know, we just basically have to educate people about what this agreement is really about. Excellent. So here's the start of educating people as to what it's about. It's about representation on the board. It's about changing the structure so that it might be flexible enough that we wouldn't have to count on the town purchasing property for the senior center in the future. Cool. So, yeah, so a lot, yeah. lot's going on with that. Town administrator updates. Okay. Uh, to start with, the town clerk and assistant town clerk are hosting a an electronic tabulator informational session tomorrow night at the town hall starting at seven o'clock. Um, they'll go through what a tabulator is, what the process is, it'll get a general overview and then kind of break out into questions. Um, so everybody's that's, that's in tomorrow, that's tomorrow, tomorrow night. Yeah. Yes. There will be um, refreshments and yes. goodies available for you guys if you're right. interested. So and again, that's town halls, not here. Yes, town, town hall. hall. Yes. Yes. Oh, yep, right. seven o'clock. Um, yeah. Eversource is going to start their annual inspection of the their Eversource only utility poles. That'll happen in October. So residents are going to see consultants from GeoForce looking at those poles around the community throughout the month. So if you see people looking and inspecting the poles, they are uh, there for good intentions with, and it should be marked GeoForce. FERCOG um, is applying for a HUD Pro housing grant with the intention of funding five years of work to support affordable housing throughout the region. They're actually applying for this with the PDPC and other regional partners. The 
desire is that if the award is successful, they would then be able to provide technical assistance to communities in order to do things such as updating your zoning bylaws, updating housing plan, preserving existing housing stock, and conducting engagement regarding the need for more and affordable housing. Uh, so FERCOG is looking for letters of support from each municipality in the county. Um, so just asking if the board would be willing to vote to sign that letter of support, and if so, I can give that link to Julie for that. Uh, I'll let Julie the select board sign a letter of support for a certain FERCOG application for a pro housing grant. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Um, the highway department has now received their new Ford F-150. Um, just a note, it is a larger pickup truck than we normally get. Generally, we've always gotten extended cabs, uh, but because we needed to do a hybrid vehicle, it does need to be, need to be longer in order for the battery. Therefore, this is a four-door uh, uh, pickup truck, but we do have it, um, and, and it is now... I saw it today. It's very shiny. Yeah, it's yeah. very shiny. Like, okay. <laughs> right. we can do something. About that, that won't last. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, on the job front, <laughs> uh, we do have that community development administrative position open. We've received a number of applications already. The, the The plan is to start review of those applications this coming Monday. Um, I plan on convening an interview group that includes the chair of the planning board and was hoping to have a select board member who will be going to review those applications and then do interviews with myself and Grant if there is a board member. I will do it at I was just going to nominate Fred. I think you're right. <laughs> it takes some of your skill sets that yeah. that uh, I don't feel it's strong in only, only interviewing skills for other things. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Fred, I'll be in touch okay. tomorrow when we can figure out schedule. Um, so with regards to the old landfill, Mass DEP has submitted a letter to the town on September 10th uh, regarding that old landfill on Long Plain Road. The letter directs the town to submit a scope of work in accordance with the department's landfill technical guidance manual dealing with groundwater, surface water, and leachate uh, monitoring at the property installing at least three groundwater monitoring well, monitoring wells, at least one leachate sample, at least one surface water sample, and installing at least three gas wells. Essentially, DEP is saying we need to be monitoring that they, there is concern that there is not monitoring or the monitoring that has happened has not been sufficient to their standards uh, post-closure. So the Board of Health is scheduled to meet on October 1st. They'll go through that letter. We'll determine next steps. We'll reach out to DEP with any questions. Unfortunately, their policy is not to attend public meetings, so they are not <laughs> able to come to answer any questions in a public meeting. We have to put to pull together our questions and then reach out to them outside of a public meeting to get clarification. Um, at this time, we don't know what the potential cost is going to be. Obviously, with monitoring, that means this is not a one-time cost. It will be a one-time cost to install, but then we will have to do ongoing uh, support for the actual reporting and monitoring. So, and is that ongoing work part of the Board of Health? Yeah, it would be under Board of Health. And yep. they would they probably need some kind of support for that, correct? That doesn't sound like a volunteer. Well, kind of it could be where we end up hiring. We have yeah. an agreement with a third party that does the monitoring yeah. for us. Yeah. Do you have the address? It says on Long Plain Road. What's roughly where? Oh, uh, um, it's in. Yeah, I saw it in the packet. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't know the exact address. Okay, sorry, just, off the top of my head. But um, let's see. Okay, I, I saw it someplace in yeah. 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 Let's see. Okay, so we can have that for next time. Oh, great here just like twenty eight blues last week.
don't have a letter. Um, yeah, I don't. Sorry. Now you probably feel like you know exactly where it's at. I know, yeah. Yeah, I hate it. Well, on paper, it's pretty long. I know. So yeah. it might take a while to find it. Yeah. I search my email. Oh, I know where it is. Yeah. Like, what the heck? The well, you're there. No. Yeah, I don't know. I'm okay. Sorry. Okay. Yes, yeah. I have mostly for people at home that went along playing road not worrying about right. that it's next door to that. Oh, I think they know this. Um, oh, so some I people may have moved in more recently and not <laughs> remember the whole land. It is. Uh -huh. Oh, you know what? Because it's. Yeah, ninety-two Long Plain Road. Okay, thank you. Yep, I wasn't sure if we had a numerical address because it doesn't have any structure on it, but it does look like we do have a. It does have a numbered address. So yeah, ninety-two. Okay, sorry. No, okay, thank you. Um. Okay. Uh. On Friday, I received a call from a concerned resident with regards to parking availability at the post office. She noted that when there are events being held at the town hall or the Waitley Inn, all the parking spaces because of the popularity get taken, leaving residents to have to double park in order to use the post office. She asked if the town could consider designating parking spaces for the post office uh, use. Uh, I was made aware that the board has discussed this in the past. Uh, I know we don't want to lose available parking spaces. Uh, as they're all public parking spaces right now. The post office does not own or lease any specific land for parking. But one option could be you could designate one space 15 minute parking only during post office hours, meaning it would be a limited restriction. It would only be during post office hours. Outside of post office hours, anybody can park there for as long as they want. I was it might be ask, one. When the are day. there events at the town hall that are popular enough oh. that they're during the senior oh, centers? Senior using. Having exercise oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, what? Which is great. It's, it's great fantastic. that it's getting used, but it is taking yeah, up a popular. lot of space. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. I would I would not object to that. It sounds yeah, like yeah, it's no, only during hours. Yeah. It's not like they have. Eight people coming at a time there. Right on Saturday morning, of course, there's yeah. like there's lots of people coming at once, but because uh, they're only open for a shorter time. But um, I think that would be a reasonable, yeah, a reasonable yeah. thing to pursue. Is that a move and vote? Yeah. 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 Okay. And um, if you have a, a particular, yeah. my recommendation would be the leftmost space in front of the building because it's further away from the town hall, but it's still yeah. really close to the door. Yeah, office. and that's not the designated uh, wheelchair. I don't believe I don't so. Think so. No, I don't. I believe think so. that's like the one over. Yes. Yeah. 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 Question: Do we want to say during post office hours, which vary? It's not well, the same hours, weekdays and Saturdays, well, or just designate hours? No. Not nine o'clock. Like the hours on the side. Just say post office. No, hours. I would. I, the language I would recommend is. 15 minute parking only during post office okay. hours, period. Not even specify what they are because they're posted on the door and should the out post okay. or change them, then we'd have to change our sign. So yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm good with that. Do I have a motion? Well, uh, I would that we but before we do we, then which two spots are we going to designate? One spot. One spot. Oh one spot. Okay. The leftmost spot in front the of the most spot. Right. Fine. Yeah. Well, okay. that's furthest from the, yeah. the town yeah. hall. Yeah. Well, that was gonna be in the motion. <laughs> <laughs> you go for it. All right. Make it all right. Let me try. Let me try. I'm trying to get it all under one sentence. I move that we designate the leftmost spot while you're facing the post office. As a fifteen-minute spot during post office open hours only, and plunk down money for a sign. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Alrighty. 
Um, we received a letter from the superintendent contract negotiations for Union 38 and Frontier will get underway shortly, likely next month. The board has received a request um, for a select board designee, could be a select board member or a FinCom member to sit on the Union 38 negotiations, and for one select board member from the collection of the four towns to serve on the Frontier negotiations. They would also be looking for confirming of the representative from the select board to the capital committee. Um, so essentially, we're looking for decisions and recommendations here. So for Union 38, it could be a select board or a designee of the, the select board. Really, so you've done that before? So yeah, I've done the Union 38 one. I've not done the... Um, yeah, well, represented I'm, from the four towns. I'm looking for yeah. four towns. I know. Yeah. Some five Kevis is from Sunderland. Sunderland. Trevor's from Deerfield. I don't know if that yeah. Bergeron, but I. Uh, Sunderland. Oh, Sunderland. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I, I just didn't know. Yeah. If he's coming. Yeah, the last, it looked like a rotating. The last few times, it's it's been someone from the I guess the larger of the two towns, and it was I. Uh, that I, I don't feel strongly that oh wait it needs to be nice so yeah. because we haven't in the I, I don't feel particularly no I just didn't I didn't know Scott I didn't know what, um, if yeah. it had been from Conway it looked like then it was a rotating event uh, yeah um, yeah I think I mean I've done it in the past it's so much fun uh, <laughs> one one note uh, on the Union Thirty Eight um, I did speak with Paul. Uh, and they had the chair of FinCom, and he did say it would be great if FinCom could be designated, and if so, Paul Newland, but um, obviously it's up to the select board to and decide. And has Paul been contacted about that? I don't know if I Paul have Newland. not, I don't yeah. know if Paul yeah. and Taya has spoken to Paul Newland about okay. that. I can't be that representative yeah. because my spouse works for Union 38. And, um, well, okay. Well, if uh, if drafted, I would serve. Uh, but if Paul would be willing to do that, then uh, I, I think he would be he would be good as well. Um, no, they just there's a lot of meetings, and they they like to do them in person. It's a committee that's been very resistant to allowing remote participation. It's because we never did it that way before. And then COVID came and we had to do it that way. So we did it. So anything that has happened can be done, but I anticipate we would have. Um, so I, I would have some trouble with that because spring semester, this is when most of this is going to happen, is my heavier semester for teaching mode. And it's the heavier semester for. But, you know, finance, we're doing finance committee office at our meetings every Tuesday. Um, so it's a it's it's a harder one to do. Uh, it's something where if Paul didn't want to do it all by himself, maybe he and I could share that. But uh, or if Paul didn't want to do it, I'd be willing to do it. Yeah. Okay. It's it's it, yeah, it's definitely a, a it, time intensive. Yeah. So we yeah. want do we want to say Paul it as the designee if he's not available, then we'll have Fred. I'm fine with that. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Fred. Sounds good. Um, and then as far as Frontier, would the the suggestion from the superintendent was that the chairs of the boards, the four boards, discuss who should have representation. I don't know if that's what you want to do or if you just want to say Waitley's fine with whatever the other three towns choose for the representation. Mm -hmm. It's up to you. I'm fine with whatever the other three towns choose. Uh, yeah. Okay. And I'm willing to continue on the regional capital. Yay, okay. Fred. You're going to go out of here wearing a lot of hats tonight. Well, I've had this one before. Yeah. Yeah. Get this. Okay. All right. Uh, last note is um, we're working with a consultant from uh, doing energy audits of a number of the town buildings to help identify any potential energy saving measures um, and those funding opportunities for those measures. So we're going to look at the town offices, town hall, library, PD, fire department, and the elementary school. And I'll work with the department at, at each of those facilities. It, this is only an assessment. It's just to 
for us to get ideas and mm -hmm. understand where some of our energy loss is happening, uh, but it does not commit us to any projects. Well, that, can I throw something out there? Mm -hmm. uh, famously, I work out for a, uh, an institution that has pledged to get to zero carbon emissions by the end of this decade. And they're doing it with geothermal and I would like to have as a part of that some assessment of whether that might work for us because not only is it going to save carbon emissions, their energy bill is going to go way down. It's going to, uh, and it is going to make the college much more financially secure. So in places, especially where you have a nearby field, you need a field that you can dig up, put stuff in, and then bury it back up. <laughs> that so could we have as a part yeah. of that? Um, I'm sure I can not and, about, and yeah. you know with IRA money, if it's still falling from the skies uh, in the coming years, so that if that's something we could pull off, that would be a real gift to future generations. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, it's somewhat different to that our buildings are dispersed as opposed to campus where they're in right, but they, a central location. No, but they've got four yeah. different fields yeah. and to, to serve the four different parts of campus. Um, they were going to try and do it all out of one field, but that turned out not to be the way to do it. And that it may be that, you know, this building is big enough that it might take uh, a small field to do it. The elementary school, same sort of thing. Um, so the big energy users, it might not, it, you know, it maybe some, there's, depending on where the, yeah. the um, timing garage ends up being. Mm -hmm. And if it's near other buildings, you can have a field that serves more than one building. Um, and there's, so there's more and more of that happening. It just occurred to me that maybe that should be at least on the, in the report. And it, it would be definitely a really expensive project. It would have to be something that we get grants to funding up front costs. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think it's it's worth looking at. And, yeah. having, having been on the Smith campus, I know that uh, just with, with the amount of construction, this is not inexpensive. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right. But, you know, that's anyway. All right. Any items not anticipated? I will entertain the motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.